So uh, this panel, just if you don't know what you're doing in this room, we're going to talk about App Store optimization, what you should know, what you should expect for next year. And I have three amazing people with me. Uh, and because he has the other microphone, we'll start with the gentleman in this panel. Uh, and uh, Kwok, if you want to tell us uh, your name, I've already said it, but also your company, yeah. uh, your job title, and what uh, your job title concretely means. Yeah. And finally, how you got started in ASO. Okay. Hi, I'm Kwok. Um, I work at Vinted, as you can no, uh, as you can see, um, I've started in February this year, and um, this position was newly created. There was no ASO manager before, and so I'm establishing all the um, groundwork really for ASO at Vinted. And before that, I was uh, at the travel company Omeo, uh, but my real start I had uh, at a small music startup of almost five years ago. And there I also just learned everything from workshops and blogs, uh, how to do ASO. It was really new back then. And uh, yeah, that's how I got my start and uh, still uh, uh, in the industry. So I think we have another person who was into music. So I'm going to pass it over to Dora. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me, first of all? This is, is very... Um, Never mind. Uh, well, hi everyone. My name is Dora. I um, just recently uh, joined a company called Trade Republic. How many of you have heard of Trade Republic? How many of you invest with Trade Republic? Yay! Great. So, for the rest of you, uh, Trade Republic is um, is an application. Now it also has a web uh, a website where you can do that. But you can invest in uh, stocks, uh, ETFs. Um, and everything you know that will ensure your uh, older years. Um, and previously, I was at SoundCloud, uh, where I was a director of growth, and I was responsible for um, organic growth uh, lately. And at Trade Republic, I'm now responsible for many things. One of them is App Store optimization, search engine optimization, affiliate marketing, the website, and you name it. Uh, yeah, very very happy to be here. Ah, and hi, I started at um, ASO. I started um, when ASO was really very new. Not many people were doing it. And uh, Laurie from Aptweek was writing really awesome uh, blog posts and uh, answering a lot of questions online. That was in the 2016, something like that, uh, or 17, I don't know. Uh, at Here Technologies, where I was working for um, its navigation app. So that's how I started with reading literally everything that existed on online, which wasn't much. Today, you can drown in information about it. Back then, it was very scarce. So that's how I started. So yeah, my name is Anna. I have been working as CEO for 10 years, and I started at six, like six years ago. And six was a car rental company, and then three years ago, they started also offering car and services, a ride, that is like basically taxi services, and then the app becomes more relevant because actually now the users really need the app for, for using some of these services. And that is how I jumped to ASO like three years ago. Um, yeah. That's a good story. Uh, so we're going to talk about the future of ASO, but as uh, it's a very old trick in the book, I'm actually going to start with the recent past. Uh, I want to ask you about uh, what happened earlier in 2021 when we started with ATT, uh, that was a ticking bomb uh, that finally started, I think end of June was the official release and then it was a progressive rollout. Um, if you're unfamiliar with ATT, this is a change that iOS introduced that requires uh, any app to collect user consent to start tracking that data uh, with third-party tools like attribution networks. Uh, and so this for ASO has on paper little to do, but we all saw it in a way. So what I want to know is, did uh, the um, drop in UA, in paid UA, impact your job? Did suddenly ASO become a more important topic at your company? Uh, and also because ASO is very late, uh, very related to Apple search ads. Did you see more budget with Apple search ads suddenly? Um, so I think when we discussed Anna, you were mentioning you you saw that part especially. So maybe you can start and we'll pass the yeah. uh, microphones. Okay. 
So yeah, at the beginning of the year, we had like 20% uh, of our users were limited tracking. And right now we had like more than 70% of our users. So it was quite scary you not know, to say, we are going to invest money in campaigns and we, we don't know where it's going to go. But at the end, uh, with tools like Adjust, you are able to more or less uh, track everything that is happening inside the app because they use all this probabilistic uh, thing. And at the end, we had increased our budget in, in search ads and, and everything is less scary than was <laughs> uh, seen at the beginning. And and was ASO also something that really picked up at that time? Uh, yes, now we are looking more into ASO, also the, all the information we are getting from the consoles, not only me that I was always doing ASO, but also my colleagues from the page channel. Uh, they want to know more about uh, what they can in their referral uh, traffic sources and, and yeah, more into ASO. And so, yeah, I guess for Quark and Dora, uh, same question, like how, how did you go at your company or companies because everyone moved around a bit? Yeah, I think uh, we put more um, focus into Apple search ads uh, because we hired a dedicated manager for uh, this channel. And uh, we're still hiring, by the way. Um, Vincent.com slash jobs. And um, also, yeah, my, my channel was created, as I said earlier. And uh, more people now are aware that the App Store page is uh, for almost every uh, UA channel uh, a step in the funnel, yeah. So uh, the importance uh, and the visibility grew there. Yeah, so when that, that happened, I was at SoundCloud, and um, we started pulling the numbers. And it's funny, we actually haven't done that earlier, I guess. But um, we've seen before ATT, and I think that uh, holds true for the entire industry, about 30 35% of users were already actively opting out directly from their settings. So you were never really tracking 100% of your users, and then ATT happened, and then suddenly we were seeing numbers 75, 80%. We really start not seeing anymore uh, a lot of the data we used to. Um, I think at the beginning, the reaction of many was, let's wait and see, because everybody was a little bit not, you know, you need time for it to, to sink in, to really believe that you're not going to be seeing the same data you used to. Um, and then, of course, uh, ASA became a very prominent thing, which was, I believe, also Apple's idea. It really worked great, and um, budgets increased uh, everywhere on ASA. Um, suddenly, people started being more interested in ASO, that's true, because um, um, you want to leverage channels that are organic and that actually have a direct impact on your conversion rate. So this is what happened, and a lot of people asking questions, how can we... Um, A-B test screenshots and make sure that people convert more. So suddenly people were looking uh, in Google Play uh, Console and uh, iTunes uh, Connect. And yeah, definitely ASO became very interesting, one of suddenly. Yeah, and I think for ASA specifically, there was also the fact that technically ASO can help you decrease CPI because you just get, like, when you bid, uh, the algorithm looks at your relevance for a keyword. So you can just check, okay, am, am I going to pay a lot for this keyword? Uh, or is, it, is there a way for me to add it to the metadata and then it, it costs less? Uh, but so looking to 2022, because that's why we're here, um, what do you think Google is going to do? Because Google has announced, like they started doing the same uh, privacy form to start showing a section that will uh, roll out in February of next year. Uh, there have been some announcements around limiting access to the Google ID for kids' apps, but do you think they're going to go the same direction? Will they go as far as Apple, even further? And how is that going to impact ASO? I don't know who wants to take it. I, I'll pick from my notes. Uh, I think it was actually do you, Dora. All right. Um, well, given the success of ASA, why not replicate it? I mean, I guess we all expect uh, Google to do something similar um, with the user ID. But yeah, for next year, I think Google is getting harder. I mean, I don't know how many of you here are ASO practitioners, um, but if you ever try to optimize your uh, Apple page versus your Google Play page, everybody focuses on Apple because okay, we can agree users uh, tend to spend more, so their lifetime value is usually higher, but also it's more straightforward. So, you know, Apple is looking mainly at installs to uh, place you uh, in your category rank. It's a little bit more straightforward. Google Play Store, it's 
it's really more complex. It's Google after all. They look at so many things. They look at retention. Are people, how are they rating you? What's your rating? How many people downloaded you? What's the relevancy? So for next year, um, something that actually Leah showed us this morning, I don't know if you have seen it, but now they have a filter where you can filter out apps uh, by stars, by ratings. So you can say, show me only apps with 4.5 ratings and above. And um, they are looking to make it super relevant for the user. So they're going to personalize it towards your interest. It's going to be really, really hard for you to just repeat five keywords on your long, long description and get the traffic you want. I, I think, Simon, you know it, uh, we've seen it also with SoundCloud. Um, adding uh, music as a keyword uh, in some countries, which is the most relevant keyword, it's the, what the app is all about, uh, didn't actually bring uh, much organic traction, uh, although the brand recognition and exposure. So I think that Google will make just more, things more complicated for us. This is how it seems. Yeah, sorry. Do you do you think there's going to be also an issue with Google when it comes to um, to actually getting access to the user uh, identifier and being able to run targeted ad campaigns, or do you think they're just going to keep it moving like this because there there's still a, an ad company first today? Yeah, I think um, they will of course uh, try to do this to uh, be beneficial to their own ad network and like exclude all the Facebooks and um, TikToks uh, now um, uh, out of um, the pool, uh, big uh, ad spend pool. And yeah, it will be more difficult uh, for us uh, to deal with it. And uh, yeah, will be uh, something that our data team is not looking forward to, I think. Yeah, I think a lot of data teams have that issue today. What about you? Uh, the same. I also think it will go in that direction. So I, I think then uh, to focus more on the organic part for next year, uh, there's also the question of iOS 15. Um, so if anyone in the room has not heard about it, uh, go check on AppTweak's blog. We're going to continue with uh, shameless plugs, but there's a lot of content out there that explains uh, there's three huge features that have been announced. Uh, custom product pages, which are basically going to be custom landing pages inside the App Store. Uh, A-B testing on the App Store, three, uh, I think this is coming out five or six years after Google, so better late than never. And there's in-app events, uh, which is actually the only feature that is not marked on Apple's website as something coming out later this year because it was released uh, end of October already. So when you saw the announcement, when you started hearing, reading all the blogs, uh, all the webinars that have been done in the industry, what did you think was and is going to be the biggest topic for, for next year? I guess you can start, you have a microphone. Okay. <laughs> um, so for me, I think A-B testing is the most important. It's where I saw the most uh, advance in, in Google Play and I'm li really looking forward. Also the custom page, obviously it's very interesting, but I don't know how they will do it. it we will really can they can do really segmentation or it's going to be something like quite basic like between new users and all users um, so I will say if I had to choose one a test yeah I agree uh, I also choose a B test um, because the custom uh, product page sounds interesting with uh, this personalized um, uh, app page uh, for your campaigns but it's limited to 35 uh, pages per app, I think. Um, so that's especially for apps that are, uh, have several campaigns and channels and uh, are in many countries. Uh, it's very limiting to have only uh, so 35. I, th I think the 35 can have subdivisions per country, actually. So okay. I, I would say it's still quite a lot uh, that are being put out there. But okay. I, I do agree that you never know how far your your teams, your marketing yeah. teams, plural, are going to go with, oh, I want to have this custom page for, yeah. for myself. So, yeah, that, that would uh, change uh, the things. Um, but uh, for us as uh, Vinted 
uh, we get most of our traffic still from uh, search, organic and paid. Uh, and therefore, the default landing page uh, will be the most important one still. And therefore, uh, A-B testing that um, will uh, make the most impact for us. Yeah. What about you, Dora? Yeah. Um, so I think both, uh, but I completely agree. Um, because when you look at your organic installs, I think this holds true for most of the apps. Um, the majority of your installs come from your search. And the, most, the majority of your search is branded. Uh, if you have a brand recognition. So it means that also some of your paid traffic will end up in the organic pipeline because, you know, people see an ad on Facebook and then they don't know, they go and Google and want to find out more about the, the product and only then they go to the app store. So you're going to have some paid acquisition that actually becomes organic under your um, tracking. So they're going to get exposed to uh, the A-B testing of the organic page. So for me, this is also number one. Uh, number two is obviously the paid, uh, the paid A-B testing with this uh, uh, 30, 34, 34 variants. Um, however, it has a little of a limitation because um, you have to have a specific URL that leads to a specific landing page for a specific ad. So you can't really do an A-B test for the same ad. I cannot say show the same banner. Probably I can actually with uh, Facebook, but um, what I mean by that is, uh, you know, when you show a banner with uh, the ad, it would be great if this can split into an A-B test and show one part of the users who clicked on that banner one uh, one uh, landing page and the others the, the other landing page, which is not really doable this way. So you have to work with uh, URLs and with campaigns. So it's a little bit more less, I think, uh, user friendly. Yeah, and I think for, for, for app install, what's interesting is that you could probably still do A-B testing of the creatives for each campaign by just playing on uh, the network uh, redirection yourself. So it, it would take longer, but it would be doable. But then what you won't get uh, is the uh, attribution data for what happens after the install. Uh, because right now it's only uh, click campaign, so suddenly Facebook ad networks become much less powerful if you're just doing an app install campaign but leading to a web URL. Uh, so that's um, that's my two cents on this one. What I want to pick uh, all three brains uh, is the in-app event because none of you picked it. All of you work for apps. So do you, do you expect that in-app events in the end are going to be really restricted, uh, restricted to gaming? Or do you still think that apps are progressively going to move towards that space? Yeah, so as six, we try to, to create in-app events for, for the Black Friday. We respect the guidelines, like no uh, display in prices or anything. We were just basically a bit like 50% off in all our packages. Um, it was rejected. It was saying uh, it's only a promotion based on price, no new features, no new content. So responding to your question, uh, yes, I think it's more ideal now for games, for app games and, and other kind of the apps than uh, brand apps like can be six so, or probably your apps as well. Um, yeah, we haven't tried it out uh, actively yet. We prepared something for the holiday season, but uh, not submitted it yet. And I don't have too, uh, high hopes that it gets uh, accepted during a story with a Black Friday promotion. Um, but I think uh, it can uh, be uh, different um, because I've seen a competitor uh, doing a Black Friday promotion uh, as well. And they even uh, had a uh, faulty deep link because when I click on the uh, in-app event in, uh, app, uh, in the app store, it uh, redirects you to the app, but uh, no specific page. So I think uh, the review team wasn't very thorough with uh, checking it, and we might sit through uh, when we <laughs> apply. It. This definitely happens, by the way. Sometimes you get unlucky, and they really uh, see an issue, and sometimes they they, they just don't notice. Um, for in-app events, I think that they're relevant for some apps and some others not really. I mean, in fintech, um, we have to really think long and hard to, to see how we can leverage this. Um, for apps like Netflix, for example, that have a new show coming out every week, it's amazing. So they can constantly promote their new content, uh, any social content, uh, audio content, this kind of creative content. 
great, why not? Now my question is, are in-apps are going to be uh, the next instant apps? Like what happened with Google, I don't know if you remember, when they first launched, um, people can, uh, instead of downloading games, they can play it a little bit without any login and then decide whether they want to install it or not. I remember we've been so excited. The entire industry, we were like, this is going to make such a change. I was working for a gaming company back then. Um, and it didn't pick up at all. So I have a question mark of how of the effectiveness. I might be positively surprised, but it's a question mark. I think here with in-app events, uh, the change is more with the fact that it, for the first time, opens the door to retargeting. Uh, because in the App Store, you're, you can now target users based on a status which is defined as new user, uh, active user, or lapsed user. Uh, and so you can just try to have uh, featuring uh, be really relevant to certain types of users. And, and I think this is more where I expect this to perform uh, than the situation we had with uh, with instant apps, where in the end people would just want to, uh, would be ready to download the app, at least in markets where broadband is good enough, and try it themselves directly in the app instead of just trying for free before uh, downloading the full, uh, the full APK. Uh, but now what's interesting to me is that um, I, I think I was expecting this to be really for games, and we've already seen, actually, Dora, you are the one who sent me the first screenshots with Google. Google had live ops. Uh, this is a closed beta that everyone can apply to, uh, where so far... And until a month ago, there were only games running live ops. And in the past few weeks, I've seen multiple ones uh, and, and that were that are run by apps. So I think you, you shared TikTok with me, and then I saw uh, multiple others. So do you think that is going to be a change? Do you think live ops is going to come out of beta maybe in 2022? Uh, and do you think this means that actually people are going to try more uh, the in-app events also on Google? I think definitely yes. Uh, the thing is that there is a bit of a catch-22. It says, um, contact your Google rep <laughs> to, <laughs> to say that you actually want to be part of the live ops, uh, which are the um, uh, in-app uh, events of Google. Um, so if you don't have a Google rep, try the, I guess, the form. Um, I'll keep you posted how this goes. <laughs> yeah, I've seen under the guidelines that actually uh, they, um, as explicitly say that you can promote your sales in there, so it might be a better case for us to try it there than uh, in-app events. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll do that. Yeah, it's true that actually the the fifty percent off is officially on the table with yeah. Google. So maybe Anna, I don't know if this is something you plan to try, but uh... yeah. Um, also, with in-app events, I mean, like I I see that m many companies will start creating like a special. Um, don't like promotions, but maybe also games or things to stream, even if they are not games, to try to be there. I mean, at least to try. <laughs> yeah, I think this this was also a hope for um, app clips on iOS last year. Uh, we've seen very few so far. Uh, I'm still convinced that there's uh, something to, to develop there, but the, the issue is always uh, the cost of production. Exactly. Um, and w with everything that we've seen, Apple and Google, uh, put out in the past, let's say, 14 months. Um, the big question I have for you, because we're here to talk about next year, is what is it going to mean to say I'm an ASO manager next year? Uh, because we see live ops. Live ops, there, there can be cases to say this is going to be run by a content team within the company. Uh, custom product pages, is it something that belongs to the paid UA team or something to, that belongs to ASO? Uh, and everything, even product page optimization in the end, is it brand, is it uh, ASO, is it paid marketing, is it uh, the product team that just decides what goes on there? So what do you think is going to be the role of the ASO manager next year? So I think uh, to face all these challenges, like really to try all these things, uh, for example, we also try up clips in, in the US and it was not working so well for us. Like at the end of the day, not many users were, were using it. It did not help us to, to get featured, but uh, still, I mean, we should try because some companies as six, otherwise we had most of our traffic by search, most of our 
our traffic by brand, and we almost don't get any explore traffic, any, any, so why not to try? And what I see in both stores is that both are trying to offer like unique content, so for the user to almost uh, have a look every day, and, and we should try to be there. <laughs> And so is the person trying to be there, is it also, is it one ASO manager? Is it an ASO team in the future? I will say more than one. I think it's becoming more and more complex. And, and you need um, somebody from the developer team that is a bit more into these topics to help you to develop these things. Somebody from content, um, yeah, it's becoming a bit more complex, I think. Quok and Dora, I guess, what do you see for your companies? Um, yeah, for us, uh, we see the um, tasks also growing. Um, we uh, will most likely take over everything related to the App Store. Uh, everything that happens on the App Store, we will take over even if it's uh, for campaigns. Uh, we will assist them in getting the assets. We know the sizes. We know um, the times that Apple and Google need uh, to review everything. So we will take ownership of it, and uh, yeah, my team uh, just grew today. Uh, we have a new member here. So yeah, that's uh, a team effort now. Nice. Welcome to ASO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a big question mark, and why? Because um, as, as, far, as much as I, I completely agree, because I see the value of ASO, I love ASO, and I, I wish that any company I work for see it as well, but you all know it's a hard sell. Um, I think next year, yes, with iOS 15, with more A-B testing, I, I would say people get, will get more curious, so they might want to staff a little bit more the team. However, it's important to uh, keep in mind that uh, when A-B testing, and we see this with Google Play, nine out of 10 times, you see zero result. It's like a nothing, and it's very frustrating. So this, when um, a leader of organization looks at all the different um, activities, marketing activities, and looks at ASO and says like, okay, I understand the theory, but what's the impact, right? And if you cannot really sell the impact and show the impact, which is very hard also with A-B testing and even with iOS 15, I, I guess it will be not easy to have a win. Uh, it would really strongly depend on your sell. Uh, how do you sell this within your organization? So there is interest. It's not won yet. So TBD for next year. I think I'm going to kind of combine the, the both of best uh, of all three answers to say, I think we, we're just going to also have uh, UA managers who are going to be in need of new things to do in a way. And so we may just repurpose, recycle it as uh, Thomas Petit suggested uh, a, few, a few weeks ago, recycle some UA managers, have them go into the data of the console instead of just optimizing based on the reports they got from Facebook ad network, for instance. So I, I think there's a question mark there for sure, but I do see ASO as a topic being something bigger next year. Uh, now, to to conclude kind of the, the session, um, I do want to uh, give a quick word about Google Play. Uh, Google Play, as you said, is not as important in terms of revenues usually, but it's still a huge market share. Um, we've seen uh, a new metadata policy Suddenly, there's only 30 characters for your title instead of 50. Uh, there's also the new rating formula that now has it uh, as a local rating. So how did you guys handle all of this? Because it happened the past two months. Uh, I think with, if we start with a title, uh, there was a question mark, should you change it very fast or should you wait as long as possible? I think that's what you did, Quok. So can you, can, you, can you tell us how it went for you and we'll try to compare experiences. Yeah, uh, I think it was announced in end of April that uh, this change will happen uh, from Google side. And uh, yeah, uh, luckily it was 30 characters, so it fits with the Apple one. So we could uh, actually just uh, adapt them, but uh, there was a lot of time in between, so uh, we could thought about it. And uh, what most people uh, probably did was to move important keywords that you lost on the title uh, into the short description. Um, that's what we did, but we waited until uh, there was a warning flag. Uh, I think it was mid-October. They said it was, uh, the deadline was end of September, but only uh, mid-October they would enforce it. And yeah, when uh, the flag uh, appeared, I changed it immediately with uh, what I prepared. 
because uh, I was afraid that a uh, uh, release update wouldn't get uh, accepted or we get penalized for the keywords after the uh, 30 uh, characters limit. And uh, it wasn't that necessary, I think, because uh, I uh, checked competitors and uh, one still to this day has uh, the 50 character title and the keywords uh, in that area afterwards, uh, they still rank very highly for this. So there is no really enforcing from Google's side uh, in title. Um, yes, uh, I've also checked that. They just updated two days ago. <laughs> so, uh, Damn. Yeah, re really not um, well, kind of mad that uh, they didn't uh, penalize them somehow. <laughs> Uh, we were being a snitch, but um, did they uh, <laughs> did put, put, put a lot okay. of work, uh, work in it, right, uh, to yeah. change things and uh, uh, lower your uh, title characters by 40%. So, um, yeah, maybe uh, it paid off a, a kind of because uh, now the keywords uh, that remained in the title uh, rank higher than before. So that's uh, a plus, I guess. Yeah, we changed the title like three weeks ago. We also were, were waiting until the end. Um, so far, I did not see any, any loss on rankings. So I was happily surprised. Uh, and the only thing I, I, I still see is conversion rate because uh, I do believe that having these keywords there, it was helping also for some users that didn't understand completely our product. And seeing that we were doing car selling, it was helping them. So that is the only thing I, I see we well, lost. Yeah, I completely agree with uh, my fellow practitioners here. Like, always wait until the last moment <laughs> before they start to penalize you. I mean, who here remembers the times when uh, you could add how many? 300 characters? How many was it? 256 characters on Google Play. It was amazing. Like, we were, like, putting, like, crazy. And, um, and it was perfect because, you know, Google will just cut your title so nobody would see what happens in the back end. And you rank for this. Um, the happy days, I think so. So, uh, yeah, definitely also waiting until the, uh, the last moment to do that. Um, and regarding ratings, that's my other favorite topic at the moment. I don't know if you have noticed, and I really, really advise you to go and check your apps now, <laughs> because what happens right now is that uh, Google announced they're going to display the ratings and reviews per country, right? So it's always per country. But if you Google your app's name on the Google search, um, you are going to actually see your global rating. They're going to show you your global rating. Usually, if your default is uh, US, you're just going to see the extension US, but it's actually your global rating. So you have to be very careful with that because suddenly your rating is going to change tremendously. It might improve somewhere, but it can really deteriorate somewhere else. And what's really weird, um, and Ilya pointed this out actually, um, uh, is that they keep the number of ratings still the global number. So it's not a local number. So you're gonna have, I don't know, 4.1 star for Germany, and you maybe have uh, 200 ratings, but they're going to display 58,000 because that's your global number of ratings, so it's very confusing. Uh, but this is what happened also to us. I, I just go and I'm like, oh my God, what is this rating? This is not happening. Until I start digging into the Google Play Console where you now have a report per country and you can see how you rank and uh, what the, the, the stars are. Keep a very close eye and make sure that if you have lower rank, uh, uh, ratings, please don't ignore it. Ask your customer service. Do it yourself. Go to the store and start replying to these negative comments and trying to, I don't know, apologize, find a solution, do something so that these people actually change their rating in the future. And this ha I've tried it, by the way, and it, it has worked in the past. Uh, don't ignore it because this is going to hurt three things. It's going to hurt your conversion. It's going to hurt your discoverability because the, the algorithms are just not going to place you high and you're not going to get featured. So think about these things. People usually over, overlook this because we're also focused into one specific topic. But think like the user. If you see 3.5, are you going to download? I personally wouldn't. So just saying that. So I, I think there are a couple exceptions. Uh, just just out of fun, I've I've been looking at, uh, for instance, the average rating of Facebook or Instagram. Um, d don't look at these store pages as an example for anything, so please. Um, but I, I do like the point that uh, there is even an impact on SEO, and that means that maybe for companies that are very local, not investing much in the US. Uh, they should also consider having the default uh, language, default page, 
not be the US anymore and just be where their main country is because that's where they will have the best rating, hopefully at least. I just want to add to that, uh, for us, US is not at our market. We have, I think, one review, one rating. So what it's displayed in Google search, it's your global. So it's not, uh, although US default, just want to say. What about <laughs> the other side of the room? I'm sorry, but uh, did you guys also have a big impact on the change of rating or in the end, was it something that went quite smoothly? Yes, we don't have many difference between countries, but still we noticed, like for example, in Germany, where sometimes we had more issues because all these car selling services and so on, our ranking is, uh, our um, rating is dropping. And yeah, it's a bit harder now because also you need to, to really have a look to every country, to try to reply to reviews from every country. And before it was a bit more global everything and it was more in balance and now you really need to be more specific. Yeah, um, we just launched in the US and uh, there, uh, as a start, uh, we get mostly uh, bad or worse reviews than uh, our global rating. Uh, globally, we are at 4.5 and in the US, we are at 4.3. So that's another threshold uh, which uh, the filter would filter us out from. Um, and yeah, we are working on it. Uh, uh, previously, it was, uh, was a customer service to reply to uh, those reviews, but now we also take this uh, into our team to focus because it's uh, also a marketing factor, an algorithm factor uh, to have a positive rating. Interesting. So for for launches, definitely something to, to pay attention to. Yeah. Uh, now, I, I do expect we're probably running out of time, so I want to conclude with one question for each of you. Uh, in terms of bold predictions. Uh, it may not happen, but if you have to make one bet on something that could happen next year in ASO, what would it be? Um, yeah, more ads, I think, uh, in the App Store. Um, they started a couple of years ago with Apple Search Ads, of course, and then with the suggestion page. Um, there's an ad since a year, I think. And I think they will expand and put uh, ads on the apps uh, and games page and also on the Today page. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you said wild, so I'm going to go wild. It's going to be iOS 15 is going to have such an awesome A-B testing tool that Google will get ashamed and they're going to expand theirs. And we're going to have a higher probability than 90% confident, like confidence level. That's a wild guess, very wild. Yeah, the same, I mean, more ads. We saw it already last year with the search ad tabs also in the App Store. And probably less information for us. Uh, every time we are seeing this, like we had less information about our users. In the other hand, to say also something positive, I am really looking forward for in-app events and things like that, and that they might give a chance to, to other companies that are not only games apps. So. So I'll add mine to, to the list. Um, this is definitely a, a bet, but I'm thinking that Google is going to be put to shame by Apple, but not uh, for the same reasons. I'm betting that seeing the targeting from the in-app events, Google is going to finally reinvest in the promise we had from custom store listings, where we were supposed to get custom store listings either by country or by user status. And so far, the user status is only when you want to run uh, pre-launch campaigns, basically. So I'm betting that there could be something in that direction to start having custom store listings for lapsed users, for instance. So uh, keep your fingers crossed. And if we have time, we'll take questions. I just have to check my watch first. Uh, we're probably quite late, so if there's one question, uh, just raise your hand really quickly, otherwise we'll speak later. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you uh, to the amazing panelists. Uh, Aptweek is at the booth downstairs. If you want chocolate or talk ASO or both, we're there, so come check us out.